it's fascinating to me that you and I are talking about this from very different perspectives, but we're really talking about the same thing. Yeah, um, totally. It almost, you know, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, this whole concept of the, you know, that we need to ground, literally electrically ground ourselves because we, we collect too much um, electrical energy and, you know, it sort of messes things up um, as one ploy to alleviate the, the uh, you know, Bateson's um, double bind, for lack of a better way of expressing it, the neuroses, the psychoses, the confusion about, you know, means and ends, cause and effect, like that. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to explain grounding oneself could also just be meditation itself. And the act of um, meditation has a lot of um, uh, <clears throat> to, to be like properly explained is very important because just by like calming the mind or like the fluctuations oh. of the mind, um, which is trying to race into um, these different webs. Like we talked about earlier, there's like interdependent webs and concepts and ideas that is running between. And <coughs> you, we, so we could just think of meditation as the process of sort of like reeling back the using the breath as a tool to reel back the intense proliferation yeah. Yeah. to a state that is more concentrated, focused, calm. And in doing so, there can be a realization of who the one that is speaking truly is <clears throat> and who the one that is listening right now truly is. And how that intelligence is just with itself. And that is just God or the one. And that that's just as simple as it gets. And that upon that realization, you sort of, you release your attachment to your individual identity so much. And you can more easily empty yourself out of everything that you were trying to get personally. And instead now, we can be more empty for that intelligence to serve itself as this earth wakes up. And, um, and there's nothing more freeing than that anyway. But so that, that component to this is so important to know truly what meditation is or to know truly what the, like the cessation of the mental proliferation, what that truly gives you access to. And I feel like that might be what you're referencing with this grounding, because we know so many people that are just obsessively speaking about concepts and ideas and proliferating about their sense of self and their sense of self-worth and creating separation with other people that, are, that, have, that they have no relation to. And so that whole process is um it's like a weapon of mass destruction really like um more than nukes um you could say the largest um weapon of mass destruction is the sense of self um and the sense of separation um and so that if we if we begin looking at it that way uh we can really quickly heal earth and heal each other and wake up to peace unity, prosperity, abundance for all. Um, when you no longer see a separation between you and other, then it becomes easier to only care about wanting to meet the basic needs of the whole world and to have everybody be swimming in prosperity and abundance. Why not? Um, so this is, this is where this leads to. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk about breath, I used to be a long distance runner and uh, you know, I used to experience that runner's high, but then I could, I figured out how to bring it on deliberately by just uh, uh, sinking my breathing to my heart rate, to my, the pace I was running at. I could, I could bring it on deliberately um, on demand. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think it's important to understand that all this, because, you know, I've been exposed to these kinds of Eastern thoughts for my entire life, really. 
but the, I always thought of that as separate from what I think about. But now, in the realization that I, that the physio, uh, my physiology is totally consistent with what you're talking about, I think it's important to realize it's within us. It's we only have to be able to realize how it how it functions within us in order to get everything sort of you know aligned in a way where now you are able to interface in, a, in an effective way. I, that may sound trivial, but I don't think it is. I th and, and you and I both know that there, most people, I, I don't think, are really in touch with their own physiology. Um, they don't care to be. It's, it's icky. <laughs> but, but if you understand it in a way, uh, so I'm fascinated by the placebo effect, which I'm sure you're aware of, because I'm, I'm convinced that once you understand that you have some pain somewhere, you can direct your energies toward that pain and you can alleviate it totally through, yeah i mean it, you can do that deliberately or better said i think you can figure out how to do that and and you can become more and more competent at it in the same way that you were talking about the interaction between two people even within yourself you can alleviate the dis this homeostasis the the lack of equilibrium of uh, your physiologic equilibrium within yourself as a proof of principle to yourself and, and you know, and th th there is room, there is place, obviously, for medicine because because there are places where it's not possible for, for whatever reason. Um, uh, and maybe that will become clearer as people become practitioners of their own of taking control of their own physiology as best they can. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of lines. Yeah.